Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Long Live the Queen, now that we've finally jumped over that hurdle. I don't know what to do next, um, as far as these thingies go. Um, Lumen's always an answer, because it's, you know, what protects her. I guess I can do Lumen some more, at least raise it all the way up, kind of. Um, I guess I can do internal affairs. I don't know, I haven't really been doing anything. I feel I like I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm almost out of the game and I haven't even touched base on anything. So, um, let's see. I suppose we could do... You know what? Screw it. We'll just, we'll do Lumen. Because that's what we know what we're doing. And, um, we'll, um, at least be protected if anything else goes wrong. We have magic, right? Right. You learn to tell the difference between different kinds of magical signatures. I already read this. You learn how to maintain a low-level detection field that um, so that magical attacks not directly target at you will slide harmlessly aside. That doesn't m need much power, so you can keep it up for long periods of time. You learn how to directly counter offensive magic with your own power so that you can burn out a spell that someone else has cast. This is very dangerous if the other per um, spell is too powerful. Once you defeated the king of Sanjia <laughs> in a duel, the invasion was meant to be over in practice. It is not quite so easy to expel a foreign army from your lands, particularly when their leadership is falling apart. The remaining um, generals seem surprised, um, surprisingly eager to go home and left without a fuss, but a large number of soldiers with broken ranks and um, have broken ranks and run amok, run amok, 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 <laughs> looting and <laughs> their way through Nova just for fun. A number of royal holdings have been damaged and valuables stolen. Not only did do you lose them, but you have to pay for the um, repairs. With so many renegades on the loose, Nova seems likely to have severe bandit problems for years to come. Woohoo! Fantastic! <laughs> Alright, let's do treasury again. Oh, you currently owe money. Yes! <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and do wield and, um, wield and sense. Done. You learn to, um, to detect the latent power that signifies a lumen even when he or she is not actively working magic. You expand your senses, learning to detect spells and magical creatures at a greater distance. You learn to detect lingering traces of strong magic from the past, even when the spell has long since completed. You know nothing more about the sense of magic. You learn to direct a beam of searing light through the end of the staff, burning wherever you point at. By concentrating, you can create a wave of discontent which panics, confuses, and enrages other people around you. You let the shape, um, you learn to shape light into images of things that are far away or things that don't exist at all. Time has slipped by you so quickly, only two weeks remaining before you ha um, birthday ce celebration, and your official coronation as queen. Have you done enough to build a stable nova? No. It is traditional for the palace to provide entertainment and refreshments to the common people when a new monarch is crowned. It is a rare opportunity for poor of the land to die like nobles. Unfortunately, the royal treasury has been stretched too far in recent times to support a great feast, perhaps next year. Sorry guys, uh, we'll get to that eventually, I promise. All right, let's um, let's do public speaking. No, let's do flattery. Let's do flattery. Uh, conversation flattery. Um, yeah. You learn when it's important to make eye contact with people. No way. You learn that flattery comments have the best impact. Do you mean you can't just tell people they look stupid? Damn. You have locked a new outfit. The castle is buzzing with preparations for your upcoming coronation. Minister press, ministers press you with detail for your favorite colors, flowers, and so on. Nope. Decoration fail. You really can't see the point of wasting time worrying about decorations when there's so much else to worry about. Others are more interested in, your, in the subject of your marriage. It can't take place until you are of age, of course. <clears throat> and considering all the preparations and the need to recover from the coronation, not for l much longer than that, still it doesn't stop people from buzzing around you full of ideas and suggestions. Not getting married, people. 
Wait, do I have Yance? I don't remember. Sitting in the court sessions is not fun. Alright, um, let's see the skills. Alright, let's do public speaking some more, I guess, and court manners? I don't know. I, we're almost to the end, so we're gonna actually finish the game. You read collections of famous historical speeches and practice saying them in convincing, dramatic fashion. You borrow the menu for an upcoming banquet and practice delivering it as dramatic speech to an audience of confused chambermaids. You study the traditional ballroom etiquette. And at this time last year, you were celebrating your 14th birthday. You were in the school garden, surrounded by your friends. A teacher brought you tea and cakes, while a wealthy merchant's son wove a crown of flowers for your head. It didn't matter so much that you were a princess then. Your title was something for the future. Many of your peers would be duchesses or oral, earls and orals, <laughs> or the like, someday. And not then. You were children. Your parents could not attend on the actual day, but they did send wonderful gifts, some for you and some for you to share. And a week later, they came to visit, and your mother took you, um, took you with her through the courtside in a splendid carriage. It was the last time you would ever see her. You wonder if, wherever she is, she can see you now. You are 15 years old, a legal adult. You have worked and studied and suffered and prepared, and now that time has come. You kneel before the priestess, bar um, barely hearing her words as she recites the blessings. She calls upon the gods and deliver peace, wisdom, and prosperity to you and th um, through you to all of Nova. And then she calls upon you for your oath of rulership. Will you guide and, and govern to protect the pe um, your people to the best of your ability according to law and custom? I will. Will you, to the best of your power, uphold the ideals of love, honor, justice, and mercy? I will. No, she's going to kill everybody. <laughs> if it's in her hands, the Nova's, um, Nova's doomed. Lords and ladies assembled, I present to you your undoubted queen, who has sworn to you to her, lord ah, to her loyalty. You who have come to give homage, will you do the same? One at a time, the heads of each duchy approaches your throne and kneels to swear his or her services to you and your heirs. People of Nova, I give you Elodie, daughter of Fidelia, your true soften. So, so, <laughs> what, what you say, you all? Long live the queen! Thank you, I will. Until you get uh, assassinated or you um, trip and fall on your own knife. Or, um, you know... Pretty much of eating poisoned chocolates, or um, let's see, how else did she die? <laughs> Once his daughter was secure on the throne, Joslyn returned to his birthplace to focus on his duties as Duke of Calaris. He was pursued by many women, but showed little interest in remarrying, directing them in, um, directing them instead to his brother, the Duke of Mazamba. Following Elodie's victory over the king, the public opinion of Lumens rose to the height that hadn't seen in you and uh, hadn't seen in a hundred years. Young children were dressed up and play <clears throat> at being magical kings and queens. Feed from the need uh, for secrecy, the Duchess Juliana and the priestess Celine were able to announce their shared magical powers and their love. At Elodie's prompting, the lovers pledged their devotion to each other in a private ceremony, after which Celine retired from the priestesshood, or priesthood to accompany her wife to Ursul. Aw, see, that's a sweet ending. First came the recriminations and demands from the queen of Sanja, devastated by the death of her husband, which Elodie ignored. Next came the subtle approaches, the quiet gratitude and offers for allegiance from ministers who were thrilled to see Tagami gone. Elodie ignored those also, which just was just as well, since the next thing to arrive was the preserved head of one of those treacherous ministers sent um, by the Queen of Sandra as a warning. There was no sign of war in the immediate future, but there was, no li um, was not likely to be an alliance either. You're going to get killed, you're going to like go into the garden, and then a snake's going to come up and bite you. <laughs> Years later, when both were adult, Elodie, Queen of Nova, and Adair, Duke of Eloth, Eloth, 
were <laughs> married. An entire week of public celebrations was set aside for the wedding, and both bride and groom paraded through the capital on fine white horses from the east. Not from the west, not from the south and the north, just from the east. Did you, like, check to see if they were from the east? Like, if they were from the north and sent to the east, did you not ride them? The relationship often seemed to be more one of uh, friends and companions than passionate lovers, but they brought stability to Nova. Oh, at least they were friends. That's important. As a lumen, it was Elodie's responsibility to defend Nova from mo uh, monstrous threats. She decided that ev um, she decided that the monsters within the realm were every bit as dangerous as those outside, and thus set herself to the task of conquering the old forest. Each monster would have to be identified and carefully studied in order to defeat it without upsetting the balance. It would take many years to reach the, um, the heart of the forest, but Elodie was undaunted, undaunted, and thus Queen Elodie's legacy stretched into the future. Ooh, see? Now it's done. I'm sorry for the short episode, guys. I didn't know that it was going to be that quick. I figured it was like going to be like horrible, horrible, hard things all the way up to her coronation. And then she would like get assassinated right when she was kneeling down because someone would be like, Bitch, you didn't eat my chocolates. Anyway, um, like if you like this video, press subscribe if you want to see more videos. I'm planning on doing another uh, visual novel. So if you want to see that, press subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.